Hello and welcome to our mid-morning newscast here on Arirang TV. It's 10 a.m. on Wednesday, October 26th in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, the top intelligence official in the United States says he believes North Korea will never give up its nuclear weapons. His remarks were promptly downplayed by the State Department. It reiterated that Washington's stance is that its current denuclearization policy will eventually have the desired effect. Agonsoa starts us off. The U.S. State Department has insisted that Washington remains fully dedicated to its policy of denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. It was responding to remarks made on Tuesday by the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. He told the Council on Foreign Relations that denuclearizing North Korea is practically impossible. I think the notion of uh, getting the North Koreans to denuclearize is probably a lost cause. They are not going to do that. That is their ticket to survival. The intelligence chief said the U.S. had options to encourage the regime to reduce its stockpile, but it would require some give and take. Well, the best we could probably hope for is some sort of a cap, but the, they're not going to do that just because we asked them. Uh, there's going to have to be some uh, significant inducements. Responding to the comments, State Department spokesperson John Kirby made clear that Clapper's views were not Washington's official stance. He added that there is no change in the U.S. and the international community's commitment to impose pressure to change Pyongyang's nuclear calculus. Clapper's remarks don't align with the Obama administration's North Korean policy of strategic patience aimed at eventually forcing Pyongyang to give up its nuclear weapons program. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, it has emerged that North Korea's recent failed Musadam missile launch destroyed its mobile launch pad when the missile ignited. A source within the South Korean government says the missile blew up shortly after leaving the launch pad last Thursday. An analysis of the launch by military and intelligence sources has concluded a malfunction in the liquid fuel engine was the cause of the explosion. North Korea has test-fired eight Musadam missiles since mid-April and all but one have failed. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been pushing the military to perfect the Musudan, and many experts believe the regime will attempt another launch in the near future. South Korea's consumer sentiment hit a 10-month high in October, marking the highest figure since December of last year. The Bank of Korea says this month's Composite Consumer Sentiment Index reached 101.9. That's up 0.2 points from the month before. A reading above 100 means optimists outnumber pessimists. The figure that measures public sentiment toward current economic conditions remained the same at 72, while the index gauging future conditions fell to 80 from 83 in September. The central bank says concerns linger over sluggish economic growth, as well as Samsung's recent decision to permanently discontinue its ill-fated Galaxy Note 7 and the protracted unionized strike at the nation's largest automaker, Hyundai Motor. Now, some rare bad news for the world's most valuable company. Apple has reported its first tumble in annual sales and profit in 15 years. The decline in sales of iPhones, iPads, Mac computers and other products slammed Apple's profits, which plunged 14% to 45.7 billion US dollars in the year to September 24th. Overall sales were down by 9% to slightly under $47 billion in the last quarter, the third quarterly fall in a row iPhone sales, the main driver of Apple's success, were down 5% compared to last year. Analysts have expressed concern the company may have hit so-called peak Apple, meaning everyone who wants an iPhone or other Apple products already owns one. A federal judge in the United States has signed off on a massive multi-billion dollar settlement concerning Volkswagen's diesel car emission scandal. The move greenlights a massive vehicle buyback in the United States. Ian Shin has the details. It is one of the largest consumer settlements in U.S. history. A federal judge on Tuesday approved Volkswagen's $14.7 billion settlement for its emissions cheating scandal. Under the agreement, owners of some 475,000 polluting diesel cars in the United States can choose between a buyback or receive modifications to improve emissions and keep their vehicles. 
Additional cash compensation of up to $10,000 will also be provided, regardless of which option the owner chooses. And the buyback will start as soon as mid-November. The German automaker will also pay $2.7 billion to support environmental programs and invest an additional $2 billion to promote zero-emissions vehicles for the next decade. Um, this Volkswagen settlement is what we have long waited for. It finally moves Volkswagen closer to uh, closing this very ugly chapter on its history. Uh, the consumers have been waiting for uh, Volkswagen to make things right with them, and, and, and we're finally at that point. However, not all Volkswagen drivers in the U.S. are happy. The settlement does not offer a solution for the owners of about 90,000 cars with three-liter engines that also have the emissions cheating device installed. Volkswagen and the consumer's lawyers are still negotiating a settlement for those vehicles. The world's number two automaker admitted in September of last year to installing software in its diesel cars to make exhaust emissions appear cleaner in testings. And while Volkswagen is trying to move past the scandal, some owners may decline the settlement offer and file their own lawsuits against the automaker. Yoon Shin, Arirang News. Well, that's all we have for now. We'll be back at noon Korea time with our main afternoon news bulletin. But in the meantime, stay tuned to Arirang TV. Until next time, goodbye.